We'll now kick off the second part of our chapter 19 lecture by introducing you to alpha alkylation, which I foreshadowed during our previous video. In an alpha alkylation, what we do is we deprotonate the alpha carbon, as we've uh, talked about before, by treating it with a good base like LDA. The resulting enolate, which exists in two different resonance structures, can then be treated with an alkyl halide, such as this ethyl bromide. The electrons on the oxygen come down, form a double bond, and these pi electrons go flipping out, grab this carbon, kick off the bromide leaving group, and place an alkyl chain solidly on the alpha carbon. This is what we mean when we say alpha alkylation. We find a genuine synthetic use for this reaction in this research which I helped conduct during my time as a graduate student. I began with this strange looking starting material and I treated it with base cesium hydroxide. Cesium hydroxide ripped off an alpha proton here generating an enolate, which I haven't shown. This enolate's negative charge on this carbon then came, attacked this carbon here to kick off the bromide leaving group effectively alkylating the alpha carbon with this piece here. I then converted this intermediate over six more steps into this final product which is called Curacoan B. It happens to be a fungal natural product uh, that has anti-cancer properties. We published our findings in this uh, journal reference here. Let's turn to some problems. I want you to figure out how to convert each of the following starting materials into the products indicated using any number of reactions covered so far this year. As I will be giving you all of the answers to these momentarily, it might be a good time for you to pause the video and attempt them first on your own. So here's our first problem. I'm given this starting material, cyclohexanone, and I'm asked to turn it into this compound which is called an unsaturated ketone, cyclohexenone. How in the world can I do that? Well, we might start to think to ourselves, what reactions have we learned in the past that can install a double bond? Well, I know that an elimination reaction could do that. So if I started with some kind of compound that looked like this product, but had a leaving group on one of these positions, and I reacted it with a big bulky elimination base such as potassium terbutoxide, I could get this product. In other words, if I started with this kind of intermediate, I treated it with a big bulky base, the base could grab this, the hydrogen on this carbon, dump the electrons down, kick off bromide, and give me this product. So that step looks reasonable enough. Is there any way I could convert this cyclohexanone into this product that has the bromine on the alpha position? Well, if I remember back to our previous video lecture, the answer is yes. I know that I can put a single bromine on the alpha position by treating my starting material ketone with acid and bromine. This is a very good use of this acid catalyzed bromination. As it turns out, one of the other products in our previous slide can also be achieved from this alpha bromo ketone intermediate. If I take this compound right here with the bromine at the alpha position, ask myself, is there any way I can replace this bromine with a methoxy group? The answer will come down to just doing a substitution. So how in the world do I replace a bromine leaving group with a methoxy group? by incubating a starting material with sodium methoxide. This is an SN2 reaction. The methoxide comes into this carbon, forms a bond with it, and kicks off the bromide leaving group to give me this product. The next product will follow a very similar pattern. I want to replace the bromine with a cyanide. How can I do that? Well, obviously, by doing an SN2 reaction, this time using sodium cyanide as my nucleophile. I wouldn't recommend doing that at home, by the way. Let's get to our final product in this sequence. I want to end up with a cyano group here at the beta position. How in the world can I do that? 
Well, I can't do that by doing an SN2 on this alpha bromo intermediate. I have to come up with some way of putting this cyanide group at the beta position. Well, you, remi you might remember from the tail end of chapter 18 that we talked about a way of adding nucleophiles to unsaturated ketones like this. If I add a nucleophile at this position, it's called 1,4 addition. It's also called Michael addition or conjugate addition. How in the world can I do that? Well, I could take this unsaturated ketone and I can treat it with sodium cyanide in the first step and then acid quench. This uh, sequence is one that I'm going to talk about in a little more detail momentarily. Let's take a look at our last product from these example problems. I want to start with this product, propanal, or this starting material, propanal, also called propionaldehyde, and convert it into this alpha amino aldehyde. How in the world can I do that? Once again, I have to ask myself, how can I get an amine at this position? Well, I bet if I had a bromine at that position, and I treated it with an amine, the lone pairs on this nitrogen could come into that alpha carbon in an SN2 reaction, displace the bromide, and take its place in the product. After neutralizing that intermediate, I would get this product. So how in the world can I get a bromine alpha to this aldehyde carbonyl? By applying the same reaction we did earlier, acid-catalyzed bromination.